Hi, I'm Sue Primo. I have been painting for some 30 years and I have been really lucky to know some amazing artists over the years. Carlin Holman is one of my very favorite artists and she's been a wonderful mentor to me over the years. So I'm quite honored to be asked to do a segment here on her e-course. I would like to talk about watercolor on fire. One of the things that I hear most often as an instructor is people say to me, I don't know what to draw or paint next. Uh, or if you don't know what to do next, you sometimes we fear doing something as well as the last painting we just did. So A, I wanna remove the fear, and B, I wanna give you some ideas. I was lucky enough that Carlin would come teach in Ocala, where I live, Ocala, Florida, and she would always beat me up in the morning, meaning uh, she was up ahead of me in the morning, and uh, she'd give you a bright smile, and I was ever so grateful, because the very first thing she would say, because she'd been up for a while, and looking at the internet, reading a book, writing things to herself about some new lesson that she was gonna work on, or a new painting, and every morning she would say, we are so blessed to be artists. And she's right, as artists we get to look at the world in ways or ask questions of the world that not everyone does. And we get to explore and ask what if, and not everyone does that. So we are blessed as artists, and I hope this next lesson will help you open up and explore that yourself. These are the tools that are some of my favorite tools to sketch with, whether I'm traveling, I'm at home, um, it doesn't matter. So I will always have a pencil on hand, but I rarely use the pencil. Most often I use a pen, either a Micron pen or a Sharpie. Um, and I like these two pens because they are permanent and waterproof and um, that's all good if I want to use water media on them. I will sometimes uh, use an elegant writer and the elegant writer is water soluble and I enjoy that. And because I like water soluble things like watercolor pencils, I will use my aqua pen as well. The aqua pen, you just unscrew it and fill it with water and I, you can go all day long uh, sketching with one, one well full of water in an aqua pen. Okay. Um, the other tool, of course, is some kind of paper. So most often I tell my students that I don't like store-bought journals. However, I was traveling this summer and I filled one of my own homemade journals and uh, had to go buy another one because uh, I just had to keep sketching. And while I was at it, um, this was all I could get. I was in a remote area in Alaska and I was ever so grateful to be able to find a journal. So I was really quite pleased with this and it is uh, Canson's Mixed Media Journal. And this journal, the paper is 98 pound and 98 pound paper is heavy enough that even if I um, use a Sharpie on it and get quite bold, I might get a little uh, bleed through, but it never bleeds through to the next page, just on the back of this page. So that's easy. With Micron pen, it never goes through. With um, any water media I've used on it, it never goes through. So that's been um, really handy. Um, the other thing I like about this journal in particular, the tooth on the paper feels real nice under any pencil, pen, whatever you decide to use. And it has a nice micro perf so that if you want to take this piece out and put it with a painting you're creating uh, and you want to keep it all together in a file, it's easily removed and you're not tearing your journal apart. That's been my biggest complaint about most journals that are store-bought. Otherwise, I make my own, and I have a lot of fun with um, handmade journals, and I have to thank my friend, my dear friend, Kathy George, and um, she 
set me on a path with journals and a wonderful idea with simple ribbon, some watercolor paper, and um, I just have great fun making these. And the beautiful thing, I can make them in various sizes, but my favorite thing of all is if this drawing was going to be an inspiration for me, I can just slide that piece of paper out, keep it with my painting, and slip a new piece of paper in, and I'm ready to go for the next drawing. Um, I really, I go through a lot of these books. I have, I don't know, 36 or 40 some pages in here, and I fill one with every, at least one a week uh, when I'm traveling. When I'm at home, uh, there's a lot of people get tripped up about uh, how often should I sketch? Should I sketch every day? Yeah, if you can. I'm not that disciplined. I'm getting there. Um, I tend to sketch in spurts and um, I'm forcing myself. I'm on a six week course right now of making myself sketch every day for at least 10 minutes. And you say to yourself, gosh, if I can't find 10 minutes out of the day and sketch something, what's wrong with me? So. Um, it's surprising how hard it is to get those 10 minutes in, but I really have appreciated uh, forcing myself to do that. So hopefully you'll do the same. And another suggestion I have is have that journal with you, and that's why size matters. I like a journal that will fit in a purse I'm carrying or a shoulder bag or something. Um, so I even carry, because I tend to carry a smaller purse, um, a little sketchbook like this uh, just so I can scribble notes uh, a little design a pattern that catches my eye and I will often take my sketchbook out on my bicycle or um, when I go for a walk and it I set a goal for myself so I was out walking recently and just decided to sketch fountains whatever however many fountains I saw in my walk around the neighborhoods and it was funny, I was standing quite a distance from this one front yard and I, I liked the angle of this fountain and it was really large. And a gal came walking across the street and she's looking at me and giving me a funny face. And finally she said, oh, making a list and checking it twice. And I, I laughed and I said um, something smart back and then realized she was curious because it was her house that I was sketching the fountain of and um, I, I quick turned the journal around and said, oh no, I'm sketching your beautiful fountain. And then she was relieved and seemed okay with it. But we're a little funny here in the States when we see people staring at our houses. So um, we have to be cognizant of that. Uh, so take your sketchbook wherever, even into the tub. And it's amazing what you can sketch while you're in soaking in a tub. All right. Um, I think it's appropriate that I show you using some of these tools. Okay, so when we decide to sit down and sketch, use a tool you really feel comfortable with, like a pencil or a pen. It, it doesn't matter. In this situation, I'm going to start this pumpkin with a pencil. And you don't have to start with a pencil. You can start right in with a... Um, pen, which is usually my favorite, but we're exploring all our options today of uh, tools. So here's a pencil and I can put these contour lines in here. They add volume, but I don't have to put in every single one of them. Now if I so chose, I could go over my line work very carefully. Um, I'm teasing when I say that, uh, with a pen. And then I can come back in here, I can add some shadowing, getting heavier with my ink, uh, because I see some shadows here in these crevices uh, from the overhead lights. Or I could, well, let me start here. I could grab 
my watercolor pencils and I like to use them on the side and I like to use more than one color so I mean that's an okay color for my pumpkin but it's certainly not a there's a variety of colors in this pumpkin. So that's what you want to do is you want to put, if you're going to use watercolor pencils or even watercolor, you want to use a variety of colors. So that's a beautiful raw sienna yellow, yellowy color. Let's get a little red in there. Now I have, I could get, there's some speckling on this pumpkin, but I'm not gonna worry about that. I just wanna get this color and have some fun with it. I'm trying to think of some other fun colors. Oh, let's get some blue in here. And I'm gonna use sort of a blue-green, and I'm gonna put that into these crevices because what blue and orange are opposite of each other on the color wheel. And they, they will, have the effect of graying one another down. So I'm going to have some heavy shadowing on this side and get a little more orange in here. And now I want to go a little brighter. So it looks kind of crazy right now, but that's all right. And then I can take my aqua pen and squeeze a little pressure and activate these colors and get them happy together on this paper. And before you know it, I'm done and I have a quick sketch of my wonderful little pumpkin here for the season. And I'm going to pull up some of that color into my stem that I'll eventually color. But for the moment, this is a fun, easy way if you wanted to add color to your sketch. Let's say you don't want to do a color or eh, maybe you want color, but maybe you want it more subtle, more neutral. So then I could go to my elegant writer. Now in this situation, when I'm using an elegant writer, I've learned that the elegant writer is best if I put it in the shadow area. So for example, I'm just going to put a sister pumpkin somewhere in the background here. And maybe its stem is going off off the page. So if I want to shadow this, uh, I'm sorry, if I want to color it and I was using my aqua pen, my elegant writer, I would just put my line work from my elegant writer only in my shadow spaces. And I'll show you why in just a moment because a little bit of an elegant writer goes a very long way. All right, let's stop there. I can always add more. And here it is. Look at this beautiful, and elegant writer is so exciting, as I know you've all seen Carlin do. Um, it separates into its component colors and I think you've seen Carlin also use it. And then once it's dry, as long as you've activated it, you can paint over top of this and all your shadowing is already done. So here we go. I have enough paint or enough color on this paper that I can pull some out of here where I have a bit too much. See what I mean? You don't need much. And uh, I can put it over here. There we go. 
Now that will be, when all is said and done, I can let that dry. It looks quite messy at the moment, but that's all right because it's a sketch. And it's that's the point, is that in your sketchbooks, you want to play, you want to explore. I could say to myself, hmm, huh, I wonder what that's going to look like when it dries. And it's in those questions that you ask yourself, what if I did this? What if I put salt on this? What if, how would it look? Would I get more of the speckling and the mottling on the pumpkin surface if I did that. All of that is beautiful information for your next painting, uh, whether it's of pumpkins or of something else. But it's those questions that flit across our brains that so often we ignore and you want to listen to them because in those questions are the next masterpiece. All right, enough of elegant writer, watercolor pencils, and pens. So what do you do in a journal? Well, I think it might be helpful if I show you some of my own um, successes and failures. So a word about technique um, using your journal. What kind of line work should I use? You, uh, most often I do just a straight line. You will see where some people uh, scribble and they everything, forms out of scribbles and that's okay it your your line work is unique to you just as your handwriting is unique to you so is your line work when you've this is a, a little sketch I did while I was in Portugal and uh, I didn't have chance I got interrupted I had to move on and didn't get chance to finish it well later on I added this is the original sketch and I added some paint, just some simple paint to it. Now all of a sudden, it's sweet. It was boring, it was light and sketchy. Very, I had a very thin pen. And so I'm quite pleased that this adds some excitement to the sketch itself. The other thing it does for me is, unlike a photograph, I can, as soon as I look back at this, when I'm flipping through my journal, I remember who I was with, the day, the lighting, the temperature in the air, any special smells that were occurring at the time. And all of that comes rushing back just by looking back in my journals. So, and I can't tell you how many times I've looked back in my journals and thought, huh, I should do something more special with that. Let's talk about that. What can I do with my journal imagery? So you can, from your journal sketches, you can use tracing paper. You can literally trace your sketches and um, reuse them and reuse them to transfer onto an, a sheet of watercolor paper. Now you have choices here with that. I could, if it was a sunny day, I could put it on the window and trace, I have this underneath my watercolor paper and trace it. The thing I like to do is this, is I will often break up my sketch. This is a sketch, let me put white paper behind it for you. So here is a sketch of orchids. And what I did, I inked it in black ink. And then on the back, I used, I don't know if you've heard of this, Art Graph makes a water-soluble graphite. And they come in many colors. I happen to really like this yellow ochre. Um, and what they do is they go down like beautiful color, very rich. And this is a uh, sanguine color and a, once you wet it it becomes beautifully uh, I mean I can activate this and pull it in all kinds of directions but um, what I like about using it dry is that this when I trace my sketch with uh, pencil it transfers beautifully to my watercolor paper 
And because it's water soluble, if I didn't like my line right there, and I like yellow because yellow is a great base under just about any color, um, and I can even take it away if I don't like it, I can pretty much get rid of it altogether. But um, I get to these, it's amazing to me. I like it better than Sorel for transferring an image. And the other thing, I like to break up a full sketch into sections because then I can compose many different paintings from these various pieces of sketches. Okay. Okay, now there's another option you can do. Depending on the size of the sketchbook you have, I will often put my image down, face down on my Xerox machine and scan it into my computer. Then I have options of printing it out. Now I happen to have a wide format printer, but even if you didn't, if you have an inkjet printer and you put it on draft mode, you can put 90 pound watercolor paper through your printer and print it out uh, from the sketch. Now, this is one of them, I can wet this all day long and this won't activate. The line work might be a little heavier than I would like, but that's all right. I can test out all kinds of color options, uh, techniques on my painting, oh, on this sketch all day long before I actually go to my more expensive paper or canvas or whatever media you want to paint on, I can play with all sorts of options on this type of thing. The other thing I've done is I, well, and I learned, I had printed it out four times, four, four up, and that was a bit small, so, but here are some examples of one sketch that I did, well, treated them a couple different ways. There we go, let's just spread them out. So here we have Elegant Writer. Both, all three of these are with uh, watercolor paint, sorry. So these are four different treatments of one sketch. Don't like this one. I like the Elegant Writer. I really feel like the Elegant Writer did a great job at presenting the coolness and the starkness of this landscape that I was witnessing. And this was, too, again, too bright, but this was, this was okay, but not my favorite. So it's a great way to test out how you might treat a subject. And let me get into this third part. Sometimes sketching is good for just sketching. There's great value in doing doodling. Well, it might start out as a doodle. Uh, this one started out as a dear friend of mine, uh, Karen Knutson. She loves to do something called wire drawing, and I've tried to study that, uh, but she is the master of wire drawing. And wire drawing, a lot of people ask, why the term wire drawing? Well, think about the image, if it were made out of wire, has to hold together. So all your lines need to connect because they wouldn't hold, as a piece of wire, it wouldn't hold together otherwise. So I started this doodle of a dead plant and I was having so much fun and the goal was to paint my plant positive inside the white and then when I got over into the darker areas, I was negative painting around the leaves, the few leaves that were on this very sad plant. But when I got done, I liked this sketch a lot better than the poor plant uh, appeared in real life. But I learned a lot about negative and positive painting and it entertained me for a very long while. And I happened to be on a plane ride at the time, so it was great entertainment. Uh, I'm just gonna flip through a bunch of these. None of these are finished. Uh, this was in a 
library in a, a place I was visiting and started to play a little bit with the elegant writer and the black pen. I want to explore that a bit more. Same thing here. I started to uh, have some fun with elegant writer again. Here, this I really enjoyed. I uh, did just a simple sketch of a magnolia tree and I left some of it blank and I actually I thought I had to fill everything I did everything I filled everything with elegant writer except over here and now I'm sad that I put some watercolor paint in these blank leaves I really liked it when it was when they were just blank so play back and forth with filling in color and sometimes not adds a lot of interest um, sketching little pieces of places you've been can be incredibly fun and you don't need to paint every last detail and especially if they're just for your information and your own edification and studying how let's say how a bell looks in these little steeples and um, in Portugal, for example, they put two and three oval shapes stacked one on top of the other as the counterbalance for the bell. It, I, it was just fun to take that time and pay attention to that. Sometimes it's practice. I needed to do a sympathy card and we wanted it to be simple, a friend and I, and um, we were exploring the cypress trees from Tuscany and how they appear. So a journal is normally just for you and nobody else. You don't ever have to show it to anyone else, but um, I'm going to show you mine, at least some of it. And I have fails and I have successes and you just never I think it's important that you see that it doesn't matter it it's all good I don't know if you can see this one but I was I had gone to the Picasso Museum in Barcelona and I just was so taken with a particular period of his when he was really inspired by doves and he kept them in had them as pets and painted them a lot in his later years in his art so I was doing some sketches, trying to mimic his work at that time. And all of this was within, I don't know, two weeks of one another. And there's a, a huge variety. Sometimes I just play with words um, or numbers. And when you don't know what to do next, use them. Here I saw a pattern that I really enjoyed on some fabric. Um, other times I write notes to myself, do little sketches. I have a friend who loves cats and I don't know, a little idea came into my head about what a cat, a stylized cat could look like. Um, here was a day that we were out exploring a botanical garden and uh, this raven or crow, I don't know, big black bird came, it was a raven they told me, uh, came and sat down I mean, very close to me, and I just couldn't get over it, so I had to sketch, even though he flew away quickly, um, I had to sketch him. And there were fields and fields of aloe and violin music playing in the background somewhere, so here I have the, the bridge that appears on a violin. I don't know why I put that in there, but that's okay. It all appeared on the same page and I was okay with that. Another time, um, Blockley uh, did this. He would take paint and splat it on paper. And I did that and got a mess. And then you're supposed to try and see something in that uh, bit of paint and make it into something. It was Christmas or towards the Christmas season, so I sketched some poinsettias that were in bloom. And banana plants, uh, ornaments on crazy looking tropical trees. Uh, who, who, why do I do this? And here's a, a sketch that's quite scribbly. And within a week of each other, how your own hand transitions and looks so different 
great. That's fabulous. We've got some Bird of Paradise. Again, more patterns. I sort of like pattern, pattern and texture. Um, sunflowers are always fun to do. Um, here I was trying to sketch people and get getting them mm, uh, gesturally, just trying to capture their gestures. And um, I would X out things, which I'm not normally a fan of, but I put an X through there to give myself a hint. And that's the, the point, is that it means something to me. For you to look at this means nothing. Oh, this was great fun. I did a, um, I saw some sculptural work. And as a 2D artist, I get excited about things that are in 3D. And I often want to play with that third dimension. And so I did some sketches of these sculptures that I had seen. And I started thinking, how could I replicate that with what I do with paper? And so then I started making notes to myself and sketching different uh, musical instruments and how I might do that. And I recently came across this book, getting ready for this segment, and thought to myself, it is time. I don't know why I put this away and didn't execute this idea yet. So hopefully you'll see these things come to life in the near future. And then the last thing you can do with your sketches is make them part of a collage. So I will um, often tear things out of a sketch that I'm, let's say it was this. Um, I might tear around this and adhere it to a, um, an aqua board or some kind of harder surface and do a variety of collaging techniques and then add paint to it and um, have great fun with that. And I'll show you one. Well, actually, I'll show you two things. One is this. This piece had been a, a much larger painting, but all of this uh, had come, this particular section had come from a trip to Aix-en-Provence. And it was a very special time and it happened to be a full moon. And this is to mimic what we, um, oh, I'm trying to think of the name of the mountain outside of Aix-en-Provence, but Cezanne painted it over and over again. And the moon where we were situated came right silhouetted that mountaintop and it was a beautiful moment. And so I quick sketched it and doodled around it and it, all meant something to me and this painting when it was all done and this is does this print of that painting doesn't do it justice but um, the original how it looked but once I got that original finished and I put it out uh, at an outdoor show it didn't last 20 minutes and it sold and I don't know if you've ever had this experience but they're all your children when you finish a painting and, and when it sells that quickly you're happy uh, and it did go to a good home but it was almost like it went a little too fast for you need a little time together and uh, that was that piece the second one is my dear friend Carlin this sketch is a very quick sketch of her her gallery here in Washburn Wisconsin and Back when I started coming up here uh, to take workshops with Carlin, oh gosh, back in the 1990s, and she had this big brown pot that used to sit up on a roof uh, off the side of the, the gallery. And as soon as my friends and I saw that pot, we knew it was time to laugh and have a grand time and explore all sorts of new possibilities. And so, being up here uh, this year uh, at this time is very special and so I did another quick sketch of this building and then created um, it just I felt so inspired to sketch it again on on rue paper I had started um, a collage uh, of various handwritten letters and different things that I'd collected and I had also um, sketched this was 
you saw my sketch of these orchids and I started to play with that a little bit and I woke up one morning and I just decided while I was here that I had to include a sketch of Carlin's gallery on this piece and I just I woke up with a grateful heart to my dear friend and she's been so giving to all of us and I wanted to say thank you and I'm calling this piece Love Carlin because she signed every letter, every email. So many of us have received them. Love Carlin and, and we do. Thank you.